Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to briefly analyze the main tactical theme in England's comfortable 4-0 win over Ukraine. So when we break down the game and we do look at the board, we have Ukraine in a 3-5-2 and England starting in a 4-2-3-1 with Jaden Sancho and Mason Mount joining Raheem Sterling and Harry Kane in the front four. So we're going to break down how England approached the game with and without possession and then focus on the main area that they were able to exploit to create some of their better chances. So what we end up seeing from England is that they are in a 4-2-3-1 and because Ukraine weren't looking to press higher up the pitch, they ended up dropping off into a 5-3-2. That 5-3-2 means that Yaramchuk and Yarmolenko were supposed to drop off and sit in between the two central midfielders. And then you have Zinchenko and Shaparenko just ahead of Sidorchuk. What you end up seeing from those midfield shuttlers in Zinchenko and Shaparenko is that if Walker or Luke Shaw look to push forward with the ball, then they're supposed to shift across to close them down as you have Raheem Sterling and Jaden Sancho often in those gaps between the wing backs and the full backs. If Sterling and Sancho were holding the touchline, then that means that Karavayev and Mikolenko would be tasked with closing them down, and that's where you would need the shuttlers in Zinchenko and Shaparenko to shift across the pitch to close down Walker or Shaw if they were pushing forward. Ultimately, when you focus on that 5-3-2, Ukraine should be comfortable with this England shape. Because ultimately, if you have Sancho and Sterling tucking in narrow, then the three center backs would occupy Sancho, Kane, and Sterling, while Sidorchuk would be dealing with Mason Mount. If Walker and Shaw were pushing forward, the wing backs could deal with them. And that would leave Zinchenko and Shaparenko able to close down Phillips and Rice, or they would allow them to shift across to provide cover in those wider areas. That would leave Yaramchuk and Yarmolenko to deal with Stones and Maguire, and if they were comfortable with Stones and Maguire on the ball, then they could drop off deeper to close down Phillips and Rice, and that would allow Zinchenko and Shaparenko time to congest that midfield zone. In terms of England's pressing, initially they did drop off to two banks of four, with Kane and Mount sitting in between Sidorchuk, and you would see Sancho and Sterling dropping off narrow to help out Phillips and Rice in that midfield zone. What you'd end up seeing happening was that if Shaparenko did drop off deeper, Sterling would step in to close him down. And there were times where you ended up seeing Mount shifting across to close down Shaparenko while Kane dealt with Sidorchuk as they invited the center backs to push forward. In most situations, you would want Sancho and Sterling to close down the center backs when they did push forward. And then you would see Karavayev and Mikhailenko push forward and Walker and Shaw could close them down as well. That leaves Zinchenko in a battle with Phillips, and this allowed Rice to sit deeper just in case Yarmolenko did drop deeper in search of possession. If England wanted to press higher up the pitch like we witnessed on a few occasions, you'd see Kane, Sancho, and Sterling stepping into the path of the three center backs. And then in that midfield zone, it should be Mount sitting on Sidorchuk with Phillips and Rice closing down Zinchenko and Shaparenko. But as stated before, there were times where they did need Rice to sit deeper to protect space between the lines. And what you'd end up seeing was that, for instance, if the ball was shifted out towards the left... Sancho would close down his center back, and then Sterling would drop off deeper to close down Shaparenko. Here you could see England's press on full display, with Sancho and Sterling prepared to close down the wide center backs if they get on the ball, Mount and near Sidorchuk, and Rice prepared to step out to Shaparenko. When Kravitsov shifts the ball out to Matt Vienko, that's where you see Sancho applying pressure, and Mount shifts across to Sidorchuk, Phillips ends up closing down Zinchenko, and that only leaves Mikolenko free. Matt Vienko ends up playing the ball beyond Sancho into the path of Zinchenko, but he's closed tightly by Phillips. You have Mount on Sidorchuk, and that results in Zinchenko looking to play the ball out into the path of Mikolenko, but it's Walker who steps in to win possession. This time you can see Mount and Sancho leading the press from the front, while Phillips is prepared to close down Sidorchuk. You have Sancho in that midfield zone dealing with Shaparenko, and you could see Zinchenko free in that midfield zone with Rice prepared to step out to close him down. Down if he receives the ball. Another alternative for England would be to have Kane blocking off the passing lane into Sidorchuk while Kravitsov does push forward and he would be blocking off that passing lane into the central midfielder and that would allow Mount to drop off on Shaparenko while Sterling could push to the center back. Once again you could see Kane blocking off the passing lane into Sidorchuk while Mount drops off deeper to close down Shaparenko, Sancho and Sterling are prepared to close down the center backs and you have Walker 
Walker prepared to close down Mikalenko while Phillips is tracking the movement of Zinchenko. Ultimately, there was a period in the game where Kravitsov did have to depart due to injury, and we witnessed Ukraine shift to a 4-3-3 that ultimately became a 4-5-1 out of possession, but that didn't shift the manner in which England looked to press. Frankly, it made it a bit easier. You'd have Kane and Mount sitting between Sidorchuk, and then you could have Phillips and Rice dealing with Zinchenko and Shaparenko. And there were times where you ended up having Mount just sit on Sidorchuk, Kane step towards one of the center backs, and then you'd have Sancho or Sterling closing the free center back, but blocking off the passing lane into Mikalenko or blocking off the passing lane into Karavayev. Following the change to a 4-3-3, you could see Matt Vienko on the ball with Kane blocking off the passing lane in Sidorchuk. You have Mount dropping off deeper in the midfield zone to close down Shaparenko, and you see Sancho blocking off the passing lane into the wide player while Rice and Phillips are able to hold their position in the center of the pitch. Pitch. Meanwhile, when we focus on England's attacking structure, they often shifted off into a 3-2-5, with Walker in a narrow position and Jaden Sancho hugging the touchline. Sancho would be looking to receive the ball in that wide area to pull out Mikalenko, and that would often see Zinchenko shifting across to provide cover. It was very rare that Walker did look to push forward to create overlaps, and on the rare occasion where we did see him push forward, Sancho would drift central into that mikalenko matvienko gap, and that's where you would see Phillips or Rice shifting towards the outside of Stones to occupy the half space. That would leave Mount in between the lines or looking to receive the ball on the outside of Zinchenko or Shaparenko, and at times we witnessed the same from Raheem Sterling when he dropped off deeper. But for the most part, Mount was looking to make runs in the gaps between the center backs, and at times we saw that from Phillips as well when he looked to push forward. Perhaps England were wary of Ukraine's threat in transition, because when you had Sancho moving into that narrow position between between Mikalenko and Matvienko, that's where you would see Sancho dragging the wing back narrow as you'd often have Mount occupying Matvienko, Kane pulling out Kravitsov, and that's where you would see Sterling and Shaw interchanging their position. There was a lot of space for Walker to break forward down that outside of the pitch, but he often remained in an inside deeper right zone. Meanwhile, when we look to the left hand side, that's where England were able to create a lot of their better chances. We did see variation from Sterling and Shaw in terms of their movement, but for the most part it was very simplistic. If Sterling was hugging the touchline, Shaw would be looking to make underlapping runs, but for the most part it was Sterling looking to receive that ball between the wing back and the center back, and Shaw looking to make overlapping runs when Shaparenko couldn't shift across to provide cover. So ultimately there were two situations for England down that left hand side. It would be Sterling dragging away markers towards him and Shaw making overlapping runs, or there was the option for Shaw to make an underlapping run to drag away a center back or a wing back, and that would create space for Sterling to get himself into 1v1 situations to beat opponents and then look to create for his teammates. Here you could see Sancho carrying the ball into the center of the pitch and dragging out Sidorchuk and Shaparenko towards him, and you could see Mount pulling out Kravitsov with Sterling and Shaw unmarked on the left-hand side. Mount ends up playing the ball back to Sancho and it takes out Kravitsov and Shaparenko, and now you could see the 2v1 down the left hand side as Karavayev's focused on Sterling. When Sterling receives the ball in left half space, he's in a 1v1 duel with the wing back, and that's where you see Shaw making the overlapping run because Shaparenko was dragged central. Sterling ends up playing the overlapping Shaw into left half space, and he has Mount and Kane making runs towards the 6 yards box. In the build up to England's opener, you end up seeing Sterling receiving the ball towards the left touch line with Shaw occupying the center back and you could see Shaparenko shifting across to create a 3v2. However, when Sterling looks to run at Karavayev, that's when Shaw makes an underlapping run in between the center back and the wing back to create space for Sterling to cut onto his right foot. That results in Shaw taking two Ukraine players out of the game and it leaves Sterling in a 1v1 with Shaparenko with Kane being occupied by two center backs. However, luckily for England, Sterling ends up brushing off that Shaparenko challenge, and from this position you can see neither Ukraine center back monitoring the movement of Kane. So Sterling ends up playing a reverse ball that bypasses Shaparenko and the center back, and Kane simply runs off the other two center backs to receive Sterling's wonderful ball in left half space, and from this position he ends up putting England up 1-0. 
And in the build-up to England's third goal, you could see them dropping off into their 4-5-1 with Matt Vienko looking to push forward. But you could see Sancho blocking off the passing lane into the wide player as Walker prepares to shift across to close him down. But from that position, Matt Vienko ends up giving the ball up to Sancho. That results in a counterattack, and that's where you end up seeing Sterling in a 1v1 with Karavayev, and you could see Shaw being prepared to make the overlapping run. As that play develops, Sterling carries the ball into left half space and he takes away two markers with him and Shaw continues his overlapping run and neither Ukraine defender is prepared to close it down. Sterling ends up sliding the ball across Karavaya for Shaw and that's where you see Kane pulling off Matt Vienko and Mikalenko should be tighter to ensure that Kane can't peel off his shoulder. When Shaw delivers the cross into the box, you could witness the poor defending from this Ukraine backline as Mikalenko didn't get tight and Matt Vienko ends up turning his back towards goal to watch Kane have a free header to kill off the game. So as you could see, this was relatively straightforward for England. Out of possession, they were organized and disciplined. And in terms of pushing forward, while their attacking ploy was rather one-dimensional and limited, the Sterling and Shaw overload was extremely effective and it played a key role in England winning this game. Hi everybody, thanks for watching and subscribe here for your latest tactical analysis and daily commentary on the interview show. And if that wasn't enough, don't forget you could find more organic, unfiltered soccer slash football analysis on the Interviews Podcast, the best soccer slash football podcast in the world, available on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and any Android apps on your Android devices.